Yo guys, say what's up, it's your boy here once again. Um, <laughs> this is a video I've been preparing to talk about for the last couple of days. Um, I had to write some notes out on it, some things I want to talk about. Uh, as it pertains to, to WWE, I was going to make this last night, but after that quick uh, uh, review I did for Money in the Bank, I was like, oh, I might do it, but I'll save it for tomorrow, So, which is today. Um, WWE. WWE are... I guess I'm going to name the title of this video, The Morale of WWE is at an all-time low, because it is. Um, I really don't know wh wh where can I start by saying this in the video, other than really the, mor the morale within WWE is at an all-time low. I don't think I've ever seen WWE go through this rough transition before in all the years that I've watched it, you know, for Jesus Christ since I was like five years old. Um, how can I say this? WWE, they're, they're failing on a lot of, on a lot of things. How can I say this? WWE are not, they're not, they're not going out of business. I don't think, I don't think they're nowhere near in going out of business. They are not, uh, losing money. If anything, they the the money is the WWE is more are more profitable now than they've ever have been in the company's history. I mean, they they're making more money now than they did in their peak when they were popular during the Attitude Era and Monday Night War days. So, despite the 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 content of the product lacking terribly. WWE are making more money hand over fist. However, that is kind of a problem. Because of WWE's lack of attention to the content, really, what they present, how they project how they project superstars on television, the storylines that they make. For so many years now, it's kind of it's starting to bite them in the ass. WWE, you look at their their rate their television ratings. Every Monday Night Raw, or just about every 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 Monday Night Raw and every Tuesday Night SmackDown, it's reaching record lows. It's reaching record lows. Every Monday Night Raw, it's a new lowest rating, you know, for the show's history. Same things happening with SmackDown now. Um, you look at their viewership by a quarterly, year-by-year -year basis, WWE's audience are dropping every year. Not by, you know, a huge, not, not, not I wouldn't say by a, a huge margin, but definitely not a, a small margin either. It's, it's enough to where you're going to be looking and kind of scratching your head and seeing this being a yearly pattern and kind of wonder, okay, what's happening here? They're losing fans, you know, by the hundreds of thousands every year. And those fans aren't coming back. Um, like I said, the, the the content of WWE, it's just, it's it's not good. The creative storylines, it's not there. Um, the treatment of some talent, it's not there. I've, I say this because, like I said, I've never seen this before with WWE. WWE is at a, such an all-time, I will say, just not only creative slump, but also such a, 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 the morale is so low. It's hitting everybody. Fans are tuning out. You have wrestlers within the company that are not happy. Wrestlers that want to leave WWE, whether that be, you know, go to AEW, the upstart of AEW, or go just anywhere else, because at this point nowadays, nowadays, uh, the independent scene outside of WWE is is starting to grow and is pretty healthy to where you can make a livable a livable wage, comfortable wage, working on the independent scene where WWE is not the end all be all. You have to make to, to make a, a comfortable living, I should say. Um, but the talent rosters are frustrated. They are are uh, um, you know want want to leave the the uh, revival and and. Uh, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson not interested in renewing their contracts. You have Sasha Banks, 
who basically at this point, she's kind of like on strike. She's taking a personal strike on WWE because she wants out of the company, which in her case, I think it's kind of stupid for her to do because she just resigned a three year deal um, last year to WWE. So um, she kind of fucked herself over um, by trying to do this strike. I don't know what she's trying to accomplish. I understand she's frustrated, but I mean, three years is a pretty long time. Um, not as long as Kevin Owens deal, which I think he, he signed a five year deal with, with them, but three years is pretty long time for you to kind of sit home and not do nothing. And you think WWE aren't going to, you know, try to, uh, 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 you know, get her back for that. Cause at that point it's kind of like breach of contract really. Um, but still disgruntled, the disgruntled talent. We're hearing that writers on um, in the creative team are disgruntled towards Vince McMahon's last minute decisions that he's doing in creative. Um, ratings are dropping. Uh, uh, even dude, even uh, 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 Ukes, um, the creators of the WWE 2K video games. Now 2K, they're the publishers. They publish. Uh, uh, the, the the WWE games, but the creators, the developers, um, Yuke Studio, which is a Japanese uh, game based company, they've made the WWE games for years, for years, and the the head director or the head game designer, I should say, for that studio, just made a statement last week saying that her creative team are at an all time, the morale within her creative team is at an all time low that she remembers that they kind of feel like they, they kind of, they kind of phoned it in. They kind of go by status quo with the WWE games that they, they get a lot of criticism from fans of the games because the video, the video games feel lackluster. And that she says that she knows that her team who makes these games, they're kind of feeling, you know, they kind of go by status quo. Now, she says, obviously, their hands are kind of tied because they can only do so much when 2K, the publisher, are the ones that kind of call the shots in terms of what they can and can't do with creating these WWE video games. But she even said that competition is good. And she remembered back in the day when you had the WWE games were the most profitable when they were when it was competition, when you had the WCW games from uh, from uh, Acclaim or, or I think it was Acclaim, yeah, Acclaim and THQ before THQ ended up doing WWE games in the late 90s and moving forward at that point, publishing them. But um, there, there was the, there, there was there, there was competition, and teams always wanted to do always wanted to outdo each other who can make the best wrestling game. And so because of that, um, she said that she is going to make internally a separate team within uh, the game company to make a brand new wrestling game. Now, whether this brand new wrestling game is going to be licensed off of, you know, an AEW or any other wrestling company, I highly seriously doubt that. But her mindset, her theory is that they're still going to make the WWE games because they love making WWE video games. They, the, their developers, the, the team that created the, the 2K games, they're fans of the WWE. But she even said that she's going to create a separate team to make a new wrestling game that can compare that. I mean, sorry, that can compete with the 2k engineering team that makes the WWE games because there needs to be some competition. This is a video game company. A video game company sees this and realizes WWE, their games, they kind of phoned it in. They're not putting that much. Now, again, she said their hands are kind of somewhat tied due to the 2k they're publishers because 2K really don't give a fuck. It's, for them, it's just a, a, a popular IP, intellectual property that they can make money off of. But the video games, the WWE video games are a reflection of the product. The product's not hot. <laughs> the games ain't going to be hot. The game developers who make the video games, the, 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 the lead designer said her team... They just kind of go through the motion. And because of that, she's like, our games kind of suck or they're, they're mediocre. Our fans have critiqued the game. And she understands the, the criticism of it because she's like, 
the team just kind of phones it in. Kind of like how WWE is. So what I'm saying is, is that WWE, their, their, their lack of attention to detail, their lack of creativity, their, their stick by the status quo uh, uh, agenda that they've had for so long now, it's starting to spill over into other uh, uh, forms of media and, and, and things that's attached to WWE, from the video games to ratings to talent being frustrating wanting out of the company to the writers and creative team wanting to you know blow a gasket uh uh with, with with the company it's a problem and this has been something that's been going on for years for years this is nothing new this has been going on with wwe for years and it's now kind of, it's it's all boiling up now to where now it's getting Vince McMahon's attention because before WWE was falling on deaf ears. They were falling on deaf ears of fans. They were falling on deaf ears on ratings. They were falling on deaf ears on 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 uh, just a lot of things. And now, you know, you see WWE. The stocks have kind of took took a dip and everything else. Vince McMahon can't use the excuse of oh well, you know, it's Monday Night Football or you know. Uh, X number of top stars were injured and, and, and were out during, you know, WWE's peak season. So that's why the ratings were low or the reason why cash flow hasn't, hasn't been uh, really, really good. You can't use that excuse no more. You can't. Some of those reasons are probably valid as to why the ratings and everything else have, have kind of somewhat plummeted. It might, it might be, but to use that as a sole reason as to why your product is in the turmoil that it's in you can't use that as an excuse no more. You can't. You've taken all the all the tricks out the bag. You got nothing left. At the end of the day, you got to look at yourself in the mirror and realize, you know what? It's us. We're a problem. Something's got to change with us internally. And that's first got to start off with Vince McMahon. I know Vince McMahon likes to put Vince McMahon likes to micromanage everything. He likes to micromanage WWE. Everything goes through him. The bus starts and stops with him. Look, let's face it. Vince McMahon is out of touch. We know that for a fact. I understand why Vince wants to micromanage everything because let's let's give the man credit. WWE has been on top for so many years. And even before being on top, he took his father's promotion and made it a mainstream media on national television. He made one of the, Vince McMahon created one of the biggest entertainment extravaganzas of the year, being WrestleMania. Vince McMahon uh, 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 put wrestling on the map. He made wrestling pop culture. He defeated his, 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 his enemies in, in WCW. He bought out his competition. He won the Monday Night War. WWE would not have been, would not have gone as far. He came up with the idea for the WWE Network. WWE would not have gone as far as it has, if not for the business, for the business and mindset of Vince McMahon. Got to give him credit for that. I will give the man credit for that. However, Even though I think Vince is a smart businessman, I still give him credit for that. I think creatively, he has lost it. And I think from the creative aspect, Vince needs to take a back seat. He can still run the business in terms of, you know, making the deals, you know, the Fox deals and stuff like that to get money and everything else. But in terms of what we see on television, what is, you know, the, 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 the creative, the creative direction of the company. Vince needs to be hands off on that because it's starting to hurt WWE and it's hurting a lot. Um, I mean, like I said, they're trying, they're trying new things. They're, they're, they're trying, they're trying, you know, the wild card gimmick thing. It's dumb as hell. I, I, I gave my opinions about that last week. The wild card idea is dumb as hell. We just heard last night that tonight on Raw, they're going to debut a new championship. I just read online today that Buzz, that the word is, is that this new championship that's going to be introduced is going to be 
a Legends title that is going to be presented to the winner between Undertaker and Goldberg at the Saudi Arabia show. Are you kidding me? First of all, introducing a, a new championship to the WWE is not going to solve their problems because they have won too many damn belts anyway. Not only on the main roster, but even if you include the 205 Live, the two NXT shows, and whatever other you know show or brand they have under the uh, under their umbrella, WWE has way too many goddamn belts. So adding a new one into the forefront ain't going to help. I mean, it's them trying. Again, like I said, the, I will give them credit. They're trying to make, you know, something new, but that's 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 not that's not going to help. Um but the idea of making a legends title like hello TNA from 2009 2010 call, they want their belt back. Like, are you serious? What's the point of a, of, of a, a, a if this is true, what's the point of a legends title between Undertaker and Goldberg? Okay, they have the match. Whoever wins that, what's the purpose of the of, of the title? Is both guys are part timers. Goldberg is only going to come here to do the Saudi Arabia show. Undertaker at this point kind of shows up whenever he wants, and even when he does show up, it's like once a year. So, what's the point of having this title belt? Is it going to be? It's, it's going to be basically like the the greatest Royal Rumble belt that Braun Strowman won uh, a year ago when he won the he won the Rumble at the Saudi Arabia show. He won that green tropical piece of shit belt that we never saw on television. It was never televised. So, what's the point of a Legends of making a, a WWE Legends title? I don't know who. You know what? It was probably Jeff Jarrett. Because if you look at WWE, they have WWE have shifted a lot of key people um, in creative. You've got Bruce Prichard who came back, and Bruce Prichard has had history with WWE for years. But you've also got Sanjay Dutt, a uh, former TNA talent who's now a backstage agent. You also have Abess, former T- TNA talent who is now a, a WWE agent, and you also have Jeff Jarrett, former founder and creator of TNA wrestling also has a key backstage creative booking position in WWE. I bet your bottom dollar, those three niggas right there probably say, you know what? We need a new title. Yeah. You know what? Vince, we had this really good idea in TNA. It was a legends title. Never really hit off on the ground, but on paper, the idea was really, really great. That belt's been retired since in TNA. It's been 10 years. No one hardly ever watches TNA or rumors that that belt even existed. Let's bring it here into WWE. And Vince goes, I like it. Let's do it. I think that's done. I'm sorry. I think I just I just think that's done. Um <coughs> I'm sorry. What else is going on with here with WWE? Oh, heard recently uh from Pro Wrestling Inc. that Stephanie McMahon called a staff meeting. Um called a staff meeting. Uh the day before Money in the Bank or the day of my, uh, Money in the Bank uh, uh, get yesterday before the pay-per-view started. And in the staff meeting mentioned that WWE now has a lot of competition, that they are going to be competing with video games, that they, they compete with video games, movies, all sorts of other entertainment, and AEW. That's the kicker right there. Now that's that's... That's the thing. WWE are not considering AEW to be competition. Now, true, the, the, you know, competition, direct or indirect, sports, movies, Netflix, any form or medium of entertainment is direct and indirect competition to WWE. But for for this article to come out to say that she mentioned AEW as competition, that to me speaks volumes because that means just like I've been saying for so long since AEW announced their presence in this rally, since Triple H made the comment about AEW uh, uh, on a NXT press call, um, since Triple H and, and Shawn Michaels took little jabs at Billy Gunn at the Hall of Fame ceremony, calling AEW a pissant company. 
they're watching AEW. They were watching all along. They they're watching with close eyes. And after just having this announcement that AEW just had last week, announcing their partnership with TNT and the uh, the, the 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 press that Warner Media released about AEW, kind of taking some jabs at WWE and what their product will be and what they will be presented to to the fans. Oh, WWE is watching that. Again, like I said, I don't think WWE are in a panic mode in terms of AEW for competition, but they're looking and they're watching because you look at what's surrounding WWE right now with the ratings dropping, um, you know, ratings dropping, just they're in a creative slump. I'll, I'll, I'll say that. They're, they are in a creative slump. With WWE being in a creative slump, and now you hear an upstart, and AEW that has a major network with the type of backing that they have financially, as well as TNT really willing to work with them on all on, you know on, on all fronts. WWE, um, they're 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 getting they're, they're they're feeling some tension, and that's good because WWE has not felt tension and they haven't felt pressure in a long ass time. When they killed WCW in 2001, WWE just kind of went in this, they kind of went on this, this long, uh, 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 they kind of went, they kind of went on this long, I guess like slumber, in my opinion, where they thought, okay, hey, we're number one, we can do whatever we want, people are going to, people are going to eat our shit, they're going to take it, and they will like it, and for a while, that, that, that did work. But now it's starting to kind of catch up to them. And, you know, with with hearing things about, you know, Fox, Fox, uh, Fox people want SmackDown to have at least three point million uh, views. USA Network is being said that they're not happy with WWE's raw ratings and they're kind of putting the screws, putting the pressure on WWE. It's starting to hit WWE now that. You know, they can't, they can't, they can't just be me. They can't just do mediocre shit no more and think it's going to fly because it ain't working no more. It's not, it's not working no more. Some fans are WWE loyalists. They will stay there. They will watch and they will, you know, advocate everything that WWE does. But it's that younger demographic. And I, I've been mentioning this for so long and even Solo Monster, not, not Solo Monster, uh, uh, Dave Meltzer even mentioned has has been mentioned it just recently that that twin that young 20 something they're losing that audience on the 35 for males they're dropping like flies and i'm telling you that's the audience that they had during the attitude era and during the ruthless aggression era was that 20 was that young 20 year old male male demographic that's i don't i don't want to say that's that's the money maker but that is kind of like the money makers, that young male demographic, and making new audiences as well. Um, that's the demographic. That's the fan base. I think it's going to be, be moving towards AEW, which is already kind of starting to happen anyway. The Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, Cody Rhodes, these guys are all in their early 30s. Omega's mid-30s, but still. They are all young guys who can relate to the 20-year-olds who can relate to a younger demographic because they're still young guys themselves. So they have young, fresh, new ideas. They kind of have a finger on the pulse of what wrestling fans kind of want in this generation. Triple H too, but still, they can be able to to relate to a younger audience. And after what happened last night at Money in the Bank, the main event, to me, it's just going to push more fans towards AEW. It's going to either push that younger demographic away from WWE and have them not watch WWE, or it's just going to push them towards AEW. Um, WWE's got to change. They've got to change. Um, the three hours for me, it's not working. Now, I know three hours is terrible. I think that I think the three hours does kill Raw. However, I think that despite that, they make a lot of money off of it. And you look at WWE's talent roster, it's like, goddamn, they kind of need that third hour. 
because they have so much talent. They have so much talent, they don't know what to do with it. And it's, it's kind of funny that we're saying this now because I remember going back to like 2009, 2010, I made tons of videos saying, WWE, you need to sign some talent. You need to sign some stars because there was a drought. There was at least like a five to six year drought where there were wrestlers that were leaving, were leaving WWE um, or getting fired, wherever the case may be. And WWE had no new stars, no new stars. All it was was John Cena, Edge, Randy Orton, Triple H, Batista, occasionally an, an Undertaker, and occasionally a Triple H, because sure was kind of starting to wind down and kind of become fit into that part-time role. So it was like, at that point, the roster was very, very, very thin. And I was like, they need to sign up some new people. They need to build new talent. And they've done that. They've signed a bunch of new people. They have new stars. You look at the roster to, today in 2019 versus, say, you know, 2010. There's a lot of new fresh faces on the WWE roster. Problem now is that they kind of have too many. <laughs> so it's like, it's an extreme with the WWE. There's no balance. You know, 10 years ago, it was like they need, they need to beef up their roster. 10 years later, it's like now they have too many. Um, and part of the fact is because they're signing guys just to sign them. They, they don't know what to do with them. They're signing them just so that they won't go to AEW or they won't go anywhere else. Um so WWE are really, really in a creative turmoil. I won't say that they're, you know, for those who say they're just as bad as WCW 2000. For anyone who makes that remark, you probably haven't lived through that time, through that era. Uh, WCW 2000 was bad. Don't get me wrong. But WWE is not as bad as WCW 2000 was. Fact. Um, WCW wasn't even as bad. I'm sorry, WWE 2019 is not even as bad as uh, WWE war in the mid-90s because the mid-90s of WWE was shit. Absolute shit. Bret Hart was the top guy during that time, and he was my guy, and I love Bret Hart to death. But the overall product at that point in the mid-90s for WWE, 94, 95, was absolute shit. WWE today is not like, it's not as bad as that. <laughs> I mean, WWE were were so bad at that point, they almost went out of business um, because they were that bad. And you also had WCW at that point rising up in the ranks and kind of breathing down their neck that kind of turn the tide for WWE, force them to turn the tide, I should say. WWE are nowhere near as in the slump as they were back then in the mid-90s, so where they were almost out of business. But um, they're still bad. Part of it, I think, too, I think the reason why WWE is also just kind of going bad is because, again, like I said, wrestling isn't as hot anymore as it once was. There is an audience for it. There, uh, 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 The independent scene has really grown and has really become really uh, uh, healthy. I, I would say where there is, there's multiple there's multiple wrestling companies and stuff that you can follow and that you can like, and it's easier to watch now. Wrestling has not been as as easily accessible now as it ever has been before. You know, whereas before all you had was WCW and WWE, and even though you had ECW as a third tier. A lot of ECW stuff was through tape trades, so still it's kind of hard to, you know, kind of keep up with ECW. But um, in today's generation with wrestling, with the internet and everything else, wrestling has never been as easily accessible than it ever has been, as well as, uh, as well as, um, you know, just different options to watch. But despite that, wrestling is not as mainstream, I feel. And that's kind of one of the things that kind of concerns me with AEW. And I, I, I'm full support of all elite wrestling. But I am very curious to see how would they pull the ratings? How would AEW look on television and bringing in ratings and everything when I feel wrestling as a whole isn't as hot as it once was? And you have the biggest guys in town being WWE for 
you know, for as much of a crunch that they're in, they're the big dogs. And for them to kind of, you know, their, their ratings are dropping and whatnot, kind of makes me wonder, you know, people just, just kind of starting to tune out of, of wrestling altogether. Not just the WWE thing, but just wrestling altogether. Just kind of starting to tune out. Um, so that that's 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 another reason why I think WWE is just not there. Um, despite all the things I mentioned earlier in this video, I also do put a, 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 I do consider a factor in that wrestling just not really as hot anymore as it once was. You know, uh, a lot of the guys. The talent's good. Don't get me wrong. The talent is good on WWE, but they're not captivating. They're not. They're not larger than life. Um, I mean, you can have a, a one hour Seth Rollins versus AJ Styles match, and they can they can tear it down for an hour. But if they don't have larger-than-life personas and they don't have larger-than-life personalities to reel you in and bring you in, you're not going to be that excited for it. Um, so I, I definitely think that there's, there's definitely some, some issues. There's more than one issue with WWE right now. Um, Vince micromanages everything. I think he needs to ease up on that. Like I said, he can handle the business side because I still think he's a sharp businessman. He can do that. But I just think when it comes to the creative direction of the company, I think Vince needs to step aside and let Triple H or Shane get somebody else in that seat of creative control and see what they can do. And Vince may be so gung-ho about it, you know, I don't trust... I don't trust, you know, Triple H's decisions, or I don't trust how things would go if, if Shane, you know, or Shane or Stephanie try, at least try. You can't, you can't say no if you haven't tried, you know, and I, I, I just think that WWE, they're just such a creative slump. They really are. Um, it's 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 biting them in the ass now. It's finally starting to bite them in the ass. Uh, just the way they book their wrestlers makes no sense. It's ridiculous. Um, I think one of the biggest things with WWE, you look at a lot of their creative. Vince McMahon, Kevin Dunn. I love Bruce Pritchard, but still, Bruce Pritchard. Michael Hayes. It's a lot of guys in 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 position, key positions, that have been with the company for well over like three decades, two to three decades. So it's it's an older, it's an old mindset. That's what it feels like. A lot of the key people in WWE is it's an old mindset with a bunch of old people who don't understand or have a grasp of what current talent or what current generation of wrestling fans want. And that's what I think AEW is going to have the edge on the younger wrestling audience. That's what I think they're going to have the edge. Because from Cody Rhodes, Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, hell, even even uh, 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 Tony Khan, who, who's the financial backer and, who, and who's the head of this thing, they're all young guys, so they're all going to be able to relate to that younger demographic. Vince can't relate to a twenty to a twenty seven year old me. Michael Hayes, Kevin Dunn, they can't relate to you know twenty five, eighteen year old males. They just can't. I think Triple H is 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 probably the closest thing we have in terms of he can relate. I mean, obviously, you look at what he does with with NXT he can relate to what the younger audience wants. Paul Heyman can relate to what a young audience wants, but uh, 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 Chris Jericho can relate to what a young audience wants. And the reason why I say the, uh, the reason why I mention those people, even though they're, these guys are in their, their forties or fifties, they have the mindset for growth. If you have a growth mindset. You can do anything because they're willing to learn. 
Paul Heyman, you watch Paul Heyman's documentary. He all he, he said in this, in this documentary that was released a couple years ago that he always wants to know what the young generation are doing, what the young generation are in. He said because the moment that you 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 don't pay attention, you're gonna be instead of ahead of the curve, you're gonna be behind the curve. And everyone's going to pass you by and they're going to slip you by and you're going to be the old fossil dinosaur who can't keep up with what's going on with the rest of the world. This is what Paul Heyman says. This is why Paul Heyman has always been revered as a wrestling genius because he keeps up with the times. He knows what's going on. Triple H has that same mindset. He knows what's going on. Chris Jericho, to an extent, I think, knows what's going on. They have that open mindset to where like, hey, you know what? It's a new generation. Our time has passed. What worked for us 15, 20 years ago doesn't necessarily work for today's generation of wrestling. They understand. They get it. But in terms of the other key players in WWE, Michael Hayes, Kevin Dunn, Vince McMahon himself, they don't get it. They don't get it, and they refuse to get it, and they refuse to have a one-track mindset. They refuse to have a fixed mindset instead of a growth mindset. And that's what's going to hurt WWE in the long run in terms of their creativity. And that's what's going to hurt them from reeling in the younger fans, the younger demographic. And that's what's going to be uh, what's going to be a negative or a crutch for them is going to be a positive for AEW. Guaranteed. You guys let me know what you think about this. I'm sorry for making this a long video, but I think I, may, I had to make some key points here um, for this. I hope you guys listen to this in its entirety. Let me know what you think. Do you agree or disagree with all these points that I made in this video? I want to hear your thoughts in the box below. Comment, subscribe, peace.